Start your future at Fairham College. Whoever you want to be, whichever path you choose to take, our range of courses would equip you with the skills you need to achieve your ambitions. We offer state-of-the-art industry-led facilities and a learning environment that's always evolving with investment in new technology. And with three campuses based in Fairham, plus established links with local employers, you don't have to go far to go further. Check out the courses and apply online now at fairham.ac.uk. Yeah. Yeah, brilliant. So, Greg, interview, take one. Who are you and what's your job in the department? My name is Greg Kitchen and I am the Faculty Director for Creative Industries here at Fairham College. Uh, within the Creative Industries Faculty, we've got a range of courses available to us um, for in a range of different subjects. Um, starting in our hair and beauty uh, department, we've got um, hairdressing, barbering, um, beauty therapies, holistic therapies, we've got aesthetic therapies, um, a whole range of hair and beauty uh, subjects that can be undertaken by students of a range of ages from 16 to 18 to 19 plus. Um, within our media, music and performing arts department we have a very successful music department which are gigging all the time. Uh, we have um, a performing arts department which uh, are putting on sold out shows numerous times throughout the year. We have a media department, we, you know, I'm sat in the TV studio now, who are producing really excellent work. Within our ADF um, area, we've got art and design, which is a real, really growing area. We've seen our numbers almost double in art and design recently. Um, within photography and graphics, we've got a really successful visual communications course that allows students to specialise on either of those areas. And finally, we have our fashion and clothing uh, course, which has its all its brand new studio, which they're working out of, which replicates a shop window. So we've got a large range of subjects within the faculty. Um, I've just touched on some of the facilities there, uh, but within each subject, there's a professional environment, something that you'd encounter in industry that is where the students do their learning. So it's not the typical classroom where you go into a school and you've got rows of chairs or tables. You know, our classrooms, our learning environments aren't like that. They are professional environments. Uh, for example, in hair, they've got a salon that they work out of. The same with beauty. Um, with um, media, they've got a TV studio and editing suites. Uh, music have um, live lounges, rehearsal rooms, um, music editing suites. Performing arts use the theatre and dance studios. They're not your typical classrooms. The facilities are industry standards to get students ready to work in industry and that also goes along with the equipment that they use we've got industry standard equipment and software across all of our subjects to really replicate that industry feel that we want to achieve well, that's a good question i think um, potential students should expect an outstanding student experience from this college and uh, they should expect dedicated hard-working lecturers but they should also expect something slightly different to what they've got in education before this is like i said previously this isn't sitting in a classroom writing in a notebook this is actually going out there and doing whatever their chosen skill and chosen profession is it's doing it for real and actually getting an experience that is preparing them for work rather than just preparing or preparing them for higher education, not just, you know, replicating that school environment. So our students, any potential students should expect uh, a real industry-led experience mixed with, obviously, the, the foundations of education that they'd be expecting. Um, opportunities that students expect, obviously, their course um, and to get a really high standard delivery of whatever course they undertake. But there's all those added extras that go into a course as well. You know, work experience opportunities, having um, employer engagements and working with employers to develop not only those skills that are expected within an industry, but those softer skills that can be transferred across multiple in um, industries. They should be expecting um, a robust enrichment programme, which is expanding all the time. They should expect to work with other areas as well. I don't, you know, none of our areas are a silo. They are all intertwined with one another. I'd be expecting media students to be working with performing arts students if they want an actor, with music students if they want a score developing, with our production arts department if they need specialist makeup done. Um, and that replicates across the whole area. So opportunities that they should be expecting to get is working with other like-minded creatives that can really make them an all-rounder when it comes to their profession. The Creative Industry Showcase is an annual event that we put on every year. I think this is our sixth event. Um, even in 
COVID, we managed to do a virtual uh, showcase, which was fantastic. But every year, we get all of our students to showcase the best of their work from the academic year. Um, a, a lot of our courses have very practical visual outcomes. Um, so it's a perfect opportunity to showcase those. Uh, every subject that I named earlier on will have a, um, a, a role to play in the showcase. Um, it's um, a mixture of, you know, for example, hair and beauty will have catwalks with all the, the looks that they've created for performing arts will be putting on shows around the college. Music will be playing, playing live music out in the quad. Uh, media will have screening rooms. There's a big art design photography, graphics, fashion ex exhibition. We take, basically take over the entire college for an entire day and showcase all the best students' work with the students coming in to show it off, show friends and family. Um, you know, there's refreshments, there's live music. You get a good day and it's a really lovely event. I think we tend to get around six to 800 people through the door. Um, so it's a busy one, uh, but it's a, a really great event for students to showcase what they've achieved in the year and talk about what inspired them. Um, it's really important for our students to have access to events such as our showcase because a big part of the creative industries is having peer feedback and critical feedback and there's no bigger feedback than having the general public coming in and scrutinising and asking questions about your work. So having that opportunity for you know, people to come in, look at work and uh, to pass comment and for people to explain their work is really important because that's a big part of the industry. Um, the creative industries are also, you know, to an extent, a service industry. You are working with paying customers a lot of the time. You need to make sure those paying customers are getting what they need and getting what they want. Um, and something like Showcase is getting that live feedback, which is really important. Uh, the lecturing team that I manage here at the college are unbelievable. Um, you know, the, the hard graph, the blood, sweat and tears they put into making sure their learners have an excellent student experience, you know, it, you know, is immeasurable that, you know, they do an excellent job. You know, a vast majority of them come from industry. They have really great experience um, to back up their, um, their delivery style and the, the teaching and learning that they, uh, that they impart to the learners. Um, so they, they come from it with a real vocational, professional perspective, but then they apply some excellent teaching and learning um, standards to that. And, you know, I can't speak highly enough about my lecturing team. They are fantastic. So all the questions. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hello, welcome to Fareham College. This time of the year, the Creative Industries Department takes over the whole college campus. Let's go and see which area's got to offer. In the theatre, the performing arts students have three half an hour shows. This is where they perform their best pits from the year. We take over the gaming pods to screen media students' work. Although it's empty now, on the day of the showcase, all the artwork will be displayed here. Now we're at the salon. This is usually a very busy place because on showcase day, they're preparing for the catwalk. The students will come here to showcase their work and this year, the catwalk's theme is shows and musicals. Have a little love. When you're an adult, you need to feel a 
life with you. You got to see the morning shade so gay. You got to put some poison in your veins. That's the way that you're a
Everybody needs somebody right now. Right, true. Ain't I lucky? I found you somehow. Right, true. Don't look back. Say you will. Heart attack. Give me chills. Cadillac in the hills. Diamond black. Drink your fill. Oh, 
I was going to propose all together, but I'll just tell you two. I've got your tickets to Vivian for a right date there in Prince Edward. What? Are you serious, Dad? I certainly am. lose my keys. So I figured I'd pop around and see if you had one so I get a little bit of practice in.
will get me fuzzed up in. Are you insane? He's here now.
legends of the phoenix all ends with beginnings what keeps the planet spinning ah the force from the beginning we've come too far to give up who we are so let's raise the bar and I'll come
Searching for something, something never comes, never leads to nothing, nothing satisfies, but I'm getting close, closer to the prize at the end of the road. All night long, I dream of the day, when it comes around, then it's taken away. Leaves me with a feeling that I feel the most, feel it comes to life when I see all ghosts. opportunities that you can get from being a student here are good like you can be a student ambassador you can be a student president it will look great on your cv and it sets you up for whatever you want to do it makes you so much more employable i went to Chelmsford because it got offered outstanding 
I got Race College of the Year as well. At my previous school, I didn't have the chance to do as much film as I would like to. And then when I came here, they told me about how we get, it's a more of a mixture between filming and theoretical work, just more of 50-50. The lecturers are great because they allow you to do whatever you want in terms of your project. So they give you freedom to explore and develop your ideas. And they're really friendly and they help you throughout all your courses. I chose Stranwell College because of the variety of um, different courses that they offered and I quite like the new site. When I joined it was just getting redeveloped so it looked really modern and everything just in the facilities just looked really appealing to me. So We have our learning resource centre, well there are a lot of computers for us to use and a lot of different resources online that will help us uh, to complete our course as well. Coming somewhere where you really are appreciated as a person, the teachers are lovely. I cannot thank my tutor enough for not only the way she treats me, but our whole class. We're treated as people and people who can achieve, not just a statistic on a bit of paper. The facilities are amazing. I, I just hate them around me. I've got aircraft and everything. Um, it's also a really good college to go to because it interests me in everything that I want to do in the future. Um, I chose Sharon College because when I came here for a taste today, I looked around, I thought it was a clean environment and the course they've done here suited me best. I really like my tutor Joe, we get along really well, um, you can go to him if you need him and he's always happy to chat and he makes the course. It provided me with the best opportunities um, a college could provide for me. I've been here a few years and I enjoyed every time that I've been here and the teacher and everyone just supporting. Probably one of my favourite things um, is the lecturers and how easy it is uh, if you need any help and things like that. The support mechanisms are always there. You know, all the lecturers are brilliant. Um, I've made a lot of friends. Facilities are perfect. Um, I can't fault this place one bit. You know, if you keep going around looking like that, you might as well be target practice. Target practice? Yeah, a damsel such as yourself shouldn't be living in a dried up slump like this. Say, where are you from? I'd prefer not to say. I just need to get as far away from here as possible. Yeah, who doesn't? But there is no gain out of the storm. I suppose he sent you. Come on now, you weren't that hard to track. I wouldn't play this game if I were you. <laughs> I prefer to keep my targets in one thing. <sighs> Nice 
nice shot. Disappointing. Get off my turf, city slicker. That was a mistake. I found where she's been hiding. She's stronger than we anticipated. She better be in one piece. She's more valuable than you could ever imagine. You know me. I get the job done. father's in prison. The, the ink is still wet, which means it's a recent transaction. He's behind me, isn't he? Terrorist threat called Trump. 
final. They have a common problem within, within MI6. And a lot of people are being arrested for treason. The leader of this cult is a man who calls himself Z. We have no information on the subject nor his alias. That is where you guys come in. I need you to be, I need, I need you to find out who he is and infiltrate and locate files. Before this gets out of hand, let's get this mission done. Agents, you are dismissed from this room. You and your father, a man near damn well killed you. And clearly left a few screws loose, especially after losing your mother to wherever she is. Cairo, you know nothing about my past or about my father. He's behind bars for the crimes that he committed against me, not the agency. What are these stories that you've heard about, anyway? My father knew him. Is it true he also killed four of his own men? A ruthless, ruthless man. No wonder he got dishonorably discharged from MI6 and booked into a mental prison. Though I heard that he was a slippery fish to catch, eh? With all due respect, Kara, that's none of your motherfucking business. Let's just get this assignment done and never speak of this again, Fish. <laughs> all right, Mr. Cookie Crunch. Seems like someone's getting a little bit soft in the middle. But listen to me now, Wilkins. Watch your back. Because I won't be able to save this son of a murderer. You seem to have that psycho killer attitude. Oh wait, you do. Operation Vertigo. Operation Eagle Spread. We're all that mass genocide and some targets. They're all stationed on home turf. All right. There's no documents. It probably mean nothing at all. Besides, they look like paper clippings from the 1970s. They show no value. Let's move on to the rest. Oh, I should have known. You're the Mong in MI6. <laughs> Everything. No, it's here. You're dealing with the Trigon and... What a praised hero you are. And I'm prepared to bring you in. Either dead or alive. Oh. Oh, Tanner, I never wanted you to find out this. But you see, if I didn't tell you earlier, I would have had to kill you. So here we are, Tanner. I hope you get to the gates of heaven. Son of a bitch. Try going in the new empire will crush the likes of you. Goodbye, Tanner. Jesus Christ. Oh good, you're here. Anyway, how did you lose Cairo? Luckily, I managed to hack into the CCTV and tap into his phone, so I know where he is. Luckily, he's only 30 minutes down the road at a wrecked abbey. How the fuck did you get in my house? And how'd you get past the biometrics? And what have you done to my house? Well, you see, the biometric system is easy to hack, plus you left your door open. Uh, as well as I did a, made myself a cuppa, did a bit of hoovering, and threw away that dirty laptop of yours. God forbid knows what's on there. So you're telling me that Cairo is one step closer from completing the mission and bringing Trigon closer together? Uh, now, let's go and kick some ass, shall we? But first, give me a minute to finish my cuppa, because I'm fucking thirsty. We? No. No, I'm going alone. 
It's only best if I face Cairo by myself. Now do me a favour, get the hell out of my house. Fine, I'll get out of your house. Anyway, don't want to be here. Wake up. Look. Shut up. Come after us. And kill us. You know the consequences and so do I. The leader of Trigon is... Zed. Is Michael Wilkins. Is your father. Me. My father's in prison. He paid me three million to kill you. But I couldn't face it. Not after you wounded me. The, the ink is still wet, which means it's a recent transaction. He's behind me, isn't he? I wanted you dead, Tanner. I wanted you dead like your filthy fucking mother. I wanted you to feel my wrath and my pain. I guess things never change with you. Always making these entries and not forgetting the past. <laughs> Killing me, for instance. You couldn't even finish the job yourself. You've been sick ever since you came back from the war. Mum, when mother died, I loved her dad. <laughs> I killed your mother. She didn't die from any illness. The army wasn't paying me enough, so I thought I'd face my demons. I could use the money from her insurance premium. She was a bitch anyway. <laughs> 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 You actually killed him? Not quite yet, but he will bleed out. You really thought I was going to let myself stand here and watch you die too? That man was a bastard. Listen, I killed Trigon and saved the man of the hour. <laughs> You Tanner, you fucking idiot! I know I should have killed you along with your weak mother. Now come back here!
And hello everyone, welcome to Left Minded. This is a talk and debate show about anything, but a lot of you have created somewhat of a theme in the debates. We are coming to you through radio and live from www.leftminded.com. I'm your host, Charlotte May. Thank you for joining me on this beautiful day. And we are getting right into it today with our first caller. So hello, first caller. So... Oh, I haven't really talked to anyone about this, so you'll be the first person who um, knows this. I've been feeling this way for a while now, and I'm, I'm pretty certain of it. I don't really know what I'm supposed to do. I'm, I'm scared. I don't really want anyone else to know any of this, but... I think I might be gay. Well, this isn't the first time someone's come to me about this. Uh, I remember your Uncle Bobby when he was a similar age to you. He was crying. He was a wreck. Even before he told me he was off. And when I look at how happy he is now with your Auntie Anne, it fills me with so much joy. We can get through this. So, how did Uncle Bobby get over this? Son? Well, there were a number of things, son. But I guess he just met the right girl. And don't mention things like that when your aunt comes over later. is embraced, the person can flourish and the positives outweigh the negatives. The issue with their mental health comes down to how they're treated. I mean, I guess you're right. I haven't thought of it like that. Thanks for explaining that. If you've enjoyed this, you can also visit us at www.leftminded.com for more information. I don't know who was in the car last we listened to that nonsense. <laughs> it's all indoctrination, those lot. You know that. Yeah. Yeah, of course. mindset. You don't know anything. You're just a stupid brainwashed female. Okay, I'm going to have to cut you off. To the new viewers, that's actually the calmest he's ever been. Uh, now to our next caller, and he's local to me. Uh, your connected caller. Um, hey. Yeah, um, there was a call that came on earlier. I I've got a few questions about it. Okay, which one was that? Uh, why do these people not accept who they truly are? And why should I accept gays when they don't even accept themselves? I think that's a broad assumption you're making there. Yeah, but it's true though. Like, humans weren't built to feel these feelings for their own gender. It's unnatural. Enabling these people is just gonna... It's not gonna help anyone. Okay, unnatural how? 
And how is enabling it an inherent disadvantage? Oh, I don't think evolution would have gone very far if we couldn't have children. It doesn't matter. We have an overpopulation crisis, for God's sake. I mean, why would you prioritise these people's mental health over an argument that hasn't made sense for... Never. I mean, it doesn't make sense. Let me ask you one question. And I want you to think about it as if it was happening tomorrow. Do you truly believe that you'll be happier if you're forced into a relationship with a man? Hey. Hi. It's good to finally see you in the flesh. Yeah, I know, right? It's taking too long for this to happen. Yeah. Oh, um, here. You remember James, so I wanted to give you his number. Nothing like that. I just wanted to make sure you had someone to talk to. Oh. You know, with the same experiences? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Thanks. I'll, I'll, I'll go put it in my wallet. What is this? I need to make my own decisions, Dad. I'm allowed not to agree with everything that you agree with. Please, let me be happy. What if someone wants to hurt you for being with James?
It was just a dream. I didn't jump off a platform to kill myself. It wasn't real. But I still felt it. Normally if something feels off, it is. But I couldn't get my head around it. I did not know if it was my sleep paralysis, or the fact that I was delusional. But something did not sit right with me. I was all alone. Yes, I'd felt alone before, but I've never been alone. You can have a lot of people around and still have no one. I guess you could say that I wanted to feel loved without feeling like I was begging for it. But hey, no one cared about my feelings, so I just stopped hoping that someone would sit next to me and let me cry into their shoulder. It was hard for me to fall asleep again after that dream and the other haunting messages that trapped me in my sleep. But it was hard for me to stay awake as well. There was no reason for me to stay awake. I was still hoping. I woke up to tapping on glass. I thought it was the window. Came from the mirror. Why are you still here? You're not letting go. This can't be happening. You're not real. We are not real. What? You died. What? It was not a dream. Now you're starting to understand. You killed yourself. I've been there the whole time. That is impossible. Because you are... I am you. You're just a reflection. What you see in the mirror is always bigger than what it reflects. That's besides the point. What is the point then? You are not here. You're lying! What are you thinking? Why am I here? You're not letting go of the past. You were alone. You were miserable. So you stopped hoping. There is a reason we feel lonely even though we're not alone. Loneliness is not about how many friends we have. Being social doesn't cure loneliness. Many people socialize when they don't feel like it. They do it just to keep up appearances. I never knew being lonely could be so complex. Trust me, it's not. You just have a lot in your mind. You don't have time to think about loneliness in general. What do I do now? You know what to do. We're just too afraid of doing it. I don't have the courage to do it. If you have the courage to make it through a lonely night with nothing but your self-destructive thoughts to keep you company, you have the courage to make it through anything. Now go. Okay, come on. Lana, I'm only in your head. I know. I have learned a lot in the past night. It is okay to be alone sometimes. Another thing, do not let fear of what happened make nothing happen. So what did I do? I got on that goddamn train.
as we know, Dracula is one of the most famous names in history. It is synonymous with vampires, and the character's physical appearance is venerated in the minds of, well, everyone. But for most, particularly the youth of the 21st century, knowledge on who or what Dracula really is, is something entirely new. I suppose you could take this experience as jumping into a whole new world. A world of mystery, a world of tragedy, and most importantly, a world of horror. Born in 1847 in Dublin, Bram Stoker began his career in the arts working as a critic on behalf of the Dublin Evening Mail, after which he worked in London's West End for the Lyceum Theatre. When he started writing Dracula, Stoker had been inspired to some extent by the Eastern European monarch known as Vlad III of Wallachia, more commonly known by his more vicious alter ego, Vlad the Impaler or by his title, Vlad Dracula, meaning Son of the Dragon. Interesting, isn't it, that there was a major historical figure with that name, and they lived in a castle not unlike this one behind me. But now, let's think about something else. Say that there's a young solicitor at this castle who's travelled here with the purpose of selling its owner property in his native town. But. The solicitor notices some strange things about his employer, most notable being that he shuns the daylight, and that he has no mirrors in his abode, and that he looks quite monstrous. He learns that his employer has intentions to harm those closest to him, let's say his wife, or his best friend, or his wife's best friend, and that he has just unwittingly given him the means to. When Stoker first published Dracula in 1897, it was well received, but it wasn't as remembered as it is now, as one can expect. But the true source of its popularity sprang in the variants of German Expressionism that emerged in the aftermath of the First World War. To be precise, those featured in F.W. Murnau's silent film classic, Nosferatu. For its time, Nosferatu was one of the most efficient pictures in terms of the creation of cinematic terror. No one had seen anything quite like it. The story of Nosferatu is directly adapted from Dracula, making it the first screen adaptation of the novel. However, there were numerous problems facing the creators as a direct result of this. Once the film was released in 1922, the remaining relatives of Bram Stoker were appalled that Murnau had created this film without them knowing about it. According to Stoker's estate, his widow, Florence Balcombe, was active in copywriting the story because it was the only way she could have financial stability. Florence was successful in her struggle to punish Murnau for his mistake and it was decided that all copies of the film would be destroyed. But clearly, the act of wiping this film clean off the face of the earth failed, as it is still viewed today. Florence eventually conceded the rights to Dracula to Universal Pictures, which led to an entire new era for the story. Now that Universal had the rights to Dracula, they could create their own film version of the story. This particular film was adapted from a stage play written by Hamilton Dean in 1924 that was later revised by John L. Balderston in 1927. Originally, they had planned to cast Lon Chaney in the titular role, given his fame acquired from The Hunchback of Notre Dame and Phantom of the Opera. His death in 1930 resulted in other considerations for the part. Eventually, the role was given to Bela Lugosi, an immigrant from Hungary who relocated to the US amid the spillover of the Russian Civil War. The costume for Dracula in this film, as well as Lugosi's performance, are the most well-known aspects of Universal's version, and differ from both the novel and Nosferatu by tremendous amounts. Dracula was the first sound horror film ever released, and since dubbing was non-existent at the time, films depended on foreign language versions of themselves to attract international audiences. 
For instance, Universal simultaneously shot a Spanish version of Dracula. While the Spanish version is arguably superior, the English language version is still revered more because of Lugosi, who has been a subject of parody for child-friendly interpretations of the character. The success of Dracula led to the creation of the so-called Universal Monsters, giving way to adaptations of Mary Shelley's Frankenstein, H.G. Wells' The Invisible Man, and Robert Louis Stevenson's Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. These films were the first ever cinematic universe, as there were crossovers, even pulling other elements of pop culture into them. In 1958, the British horror film company known as Hammer released the first ever Dracula film to be released in colour. The film was titled Horror of Dracula in the US and cast the late Sir Christopher Lee in the leading role. Lee played Dracula more times than any other actor. However, the man himself considered this persistent typecasting to be more of a curse than a blessing. He criticised the stories of Hammer's sequels due to their alleged misrepresentation of Stoker's character and even refused to play Dracula for them. However, he would inevitably succumb to Hammer's emotional blackmail. In the 1990s, the acclaimed director of The Godfather and Apocalypse Now, Francis Ford Coppola, was approached by Winona Ryder and James V. Hart, who presented before him the first draft of the script for yet another adaptation of Dracula. The film was titled Bram Stoker's Dracula, indicating that it would follow the book very closely. It included all of Stoker's major characters and the book's most vital scenes, but there were still major alterations. The film stars Gary Oldman as Dracula, who is depicted as a tragic hero who renounces God after the love of his life commits suicide. Coppola's version was a major success upon its release in 1992 and was nominated for four Academy Awards, three of which it won. But even after that, Lugosi's portrayal of the Count cuts deep as steel to this day and Oldman's performance perhaps arrived too late to contest him. Lugosi's voice is the first thing that people think of when imitating Dracula, and perhaps the only thing. But regardless, the character may never escape the minds, hearts, or souls of audiences, young or old. He is one of the characters to be portrayed by the most actors, and is one of the most infamous villains in fictional history. No one may ever escape from him. What kind of life is this that I'm in? I make the wrong moves and I'll do it again. Other thinkings made me shut out my friends. Nothing's alright, but I'll pretend. When you I never want to feel this way again Hating myself every day to no end But all these bad thoughts always find their way in But I'll try to forget them I don't want to talk about it anymore Cause I never want to cost you a chore
before I came to Fareham College, I was on and off about the decision of going. Thank you. 
going to university and I was a bit unsure if I wanted to progress further with education but with a little bit of talking to my success coaches and then pushing me forward towards it I felt more than confident and they guided me in the right direction. College has helped me dramatically with my personal statements and just over research of unis. The application process was part of my course this year and the college gave me full support and told us exactly what to do and when to do it by. We were given guidance through the entire process. My lecturers at Fairham College, they supported me so much through my assignments and upcoming exams. They did not want you to fail. They will push and push and push until you get a good grade. And the college was very supportive. I had to video myself doing lots of different styles of dance, lots of different songs, lots of different monologues. They let me use the studio space. My lecturer watched back my videos and helped me record them and told me like if I needed to redo it. Our tutor also helped us with the whole UCAS side of applying for university and was really supportive through it. He helped us with all our application forms, filling everything in and even student finance. So the college overall was just really helpful. It's very uncommon that construction students progress further on higher education. However, I've chosen to take this step because thanks to the help of my lecturer, he's allowed to see me what actually else is out there in construction and how higher education can help me achieve that. I've always had the feedback given to me whether my work is good or if there's areas that I can improve on. So they've always been there to help me with my transition to university from the college. I decided to come to Fairham College because, not only because it was close to me, but quite recently, Everyone I know that was older than me had come to Barron College and was telling me about how amazing it was, how they got a new refurb, how beautiful the campus was, how lovely the lecturers were. And they recently started winning loads of awards. And when it came to my open day, they were just so opening and welcome, I just knew that I belonged here. Okay, hello. Um, my name's Rob Hind. I'm a curriculum area manager for higher education at Fairham College. I also lecture on the creative media production courses here. I, I specifically um, uh, lead the second year extended diploma for the UAL course, which is a level three course. And I'm also the course leader for level four HNC in creative media production. Um, I think the reason I chose to become a lecturer is perhaps because I'm going to think of anything else to do. No, that, that's probably not true. Um, when I left, I did a, a degree in journalism, film and broadcasting at Cardiff University and I didn't really kind of have a clear career plan, you know, when I left. So when I left university, I worked in a car insurance company for a year. I worked in a restaurant for a little while. Uh, and I think doing that, I realised that it, car insurance wasn't what I wanted to build a career in. I left the car insurance company and I joined a PGCE course uh, at also at Cardiff University and trained to become a teacher. I think the fact that both my parents were teachers probably had something to do with it. I think that's probably like, yeah, was a, an obvious career path for me. Uh, and I think at the time I felt I didn't really have the get up and go and drive to succeed in the film industry. I think maybe if I was doing this again now, if I, if I was 18 again now, I think there were such great opportunities to go and work in film and media. I'd definitely be looking to build a career for myself in the film industry. Uh, I think the best project I've ever been involved with with any students at college would probably be our DV Mission film that we made a couple of years ago. So DV Mission is a 48 hour film challenge that runs in Portsmouth every year. And so what they do is they give you a film title, a line of dialogue and a genre on, at five o'clock on a Friday night. And then by five o'clock on Sunday, you have to have uploaded a two minute film that kind of fits the criteria they've given you. So uh, a couple of years ago, I entered a team. I usually enter with some friends. I also got some of the HNC students involved. Also my daughter was involved with some of her friends as well. So it's a really nice project involving people from this college, people from elsewhere. Uh, and we had to make a Hammer horror film in two minutes and we won uh, first prize. Uh, in that competition, so, and that was up against some, you know, some really talented professional filmmakers. So, you know, I'm really proud of that achievement. I really enjoy teaching. It's great to have the opportunity to spend all day talking about films and movies and with young, enthusiastic people who are just as excited and interested by about films uh, as I am. Uh, it's really great to you know support their creativity to help them sort of express themselves. You know, they're always coming up with amazing new ideas and ways of doing things that would never occur to me. So, you know, it's always it's a really inspirational thing to do. And you know, often sometimes I find myself pinching myself and saying, God, I can't believe I'm getting paid for this. Higher education is what we call education, you know, once you've gone beyond college. So students here at Fairham College are studying what we call level three courses. So 
our students do a level three UAL diploma, you could do a level three BTEC. At other colleges or school six forms, you might do A levels, which are probably the most well-known level three uh, qualification. When you get to university, that's, a le that's level four. The first level of university is kind of a level four qualification, and then you go up through levels five and six in your second and third years. Uh, so a full degree is a level six qualification. Now, most students will probably go on to university after they've studied at level three, you know, and that's probably the right thing for most students, but there are other alternatives. And here at Fairham, we have a range of uh, level four qualifications uh, which students can opt into. So for example, in this faculty, the Creative Industries faculty, we have a higher national certificate in creative uh, media production, which is the course that I teach. Uh, we have an HNC in music and also in performing arts. Uh, this coming September, we're launching a level four diploma in creative enterprise, which is a course that will encourage students to turn their creativity into a sustainable business. So there are lots of good reasons why you might want to study higher education here at Fairham rather than going on to university. For one thing, our course fees are a lot cheaper, so you can uh, study here you know, and save money on the fees you would be paying to, at the university. Uh, you can obviously sort of study more locally. If you live locally to Fairham and you kind of walk here or you know, commute through a short distance, you can stay at home and continue living at home rather than have to move to a big city or commute into Southampton or Portsmouth or further afield uh, to continue your education. Uh, we often find that students kind of, although they want to carry on learning and they want to stay in the sort of creative field, uh, sometimes they're maybe not just not ready to make that jump to a bigger institution. So moving to a university in a big city uh, can be quite intimidating, it can be quite nerve-wracking. People get homesick and, you know, feel like, you know, a lot of people drop out in the first year of university because, you know, they, they feel homesick or, you know, don't feel like they've uh, made the transition. Uh, sometimes it can maybe be a bit difficult to kind of, you know, uh, form personal relationships with people on such a big course. Whereas if you study here, uh, we have tend to have much smaller class sizes. So my HNC Media course last year had just six students on it and we're only... We're looking to have maybe 10 or so uh, in September. So you'll, you'll be part of a smaller group. You'll get to know each other really quickly. Your lecturer will clearly have a much clearer idea of who you are. You're one of a small class rather than one of potentially dozens of students in a lecture hall. So your lecturers will get to know you and we can kind of give you the sort of personal support that maybe might be trickier to get at university. So the HNC um, media course that you can study here at Fairham is a really great introduction to the film industry and film production. Uh, you don't need to have studied film beforehand. Like a lot of the students on the course will be coming to us having studied a level three creative media production here at Fairham. Some students come to us having done film A level at other colleges. Some students will come to us not having studied film at all. Uh, and we will sort of, we don't assume any prior knowledge. The first thing that we will do will be kind of an induction to basic film language and camera operation. So you'll be brought up to speed very quickly with some uh, induction topics. Uh, and then it's, the, the course gives you a really good sort of grounding in film. There's a film studies unit. So we study the sort of theoretical aspects of film. You'll study film as an art form by looking at a range of films. Uh, there's a film production unit uh, assignment which will cover three of the units in the course. So you'll study film uh, planning and uh, preparation. Uh, you'll study uh, cinematography and you'll study editing. So you'll have the basic skills required to go out and make a professional quality feature film. We also study sort of the, the film industry and look at career paths and job roles within it. So by the time you finish the course, you'll have a really clear idea about what the film industry is and what routes are available into it. And you'll also have the skills that you'll need in order to make a success of your career in that industry. So the success rate on the course is really good. Uh, we had six students begin the course uh, last year and five of them successfully completed the course, all gaining either a distinction or a merit grade. We had one student leave the course because you know, of uh, reasons that were outside of his control. He wasn't able to finish the course. But those people that did make it to the end uh, did so you know, and gained very successful grades. The HNC uh, media production course here at Fairham is quite new, so we haven't had any students sort of uh, progress onto the film industry yet. All of uh, this, most of the students we've had so far 
have progressed on to university. So one of the advantages of doing the course here is that this, could, this is the equivalent of your first year at university, and when you move on elsewhere, you can go straight into the second year uh, and then still have a degree at the end of three years, but having saved quite some considerable amount of money on the tuition fees for the first year and had the chance to study in, in, in our environment. One of our students went on to Brighton Film and Screen School where he's developing a very successful kind of uh, a portfolio of work and I think he's going to make a big success of it in the film industry. We had another student go on and study media at Chichester, we've had a student move on to Portsmouth University. Uh, one of our mature students uh, used the skills he picked up here to develop his own photography and uh, video business. People are going on and progressing into routes that are going to make them a success in the film industry to come.
fabulous. Okay, so I'm going to give you the choice of what I demonstrate first. So you've got a couple of choices. So we've got hair removal with the IPL um, or, and the YAG. I'll, I'll show you both. Or I can do skin rejuvenation, which focuses on pigmentation and thread veins. Um, but I'm going to do the procedure that's like the whole umbrella of skin re rejuvenation rather than specific, because otherwise it will be here forever doing all the different elements. Um, so what would you like to see first, really? They come back with anything. <laughs> We've got to remember to type. <laughs> skin rejuvenation. Skin rejuvenation. Okie dokie. Absolutely fine. So, skin rejuvenation then. So, mainly focuses on the face, chest decolletage area and hands um, generally don't get much skin rejuvenation skin rejuvenation <laughs> I can hear you Carol as well um, so yeah it mainly focuses on the face the hands um, sometimes the arms and the decolletage area can you still hear me okay Perfect. Delay, so oh, okay, this is a delay. Okay, that's <laughs> why I'm like, Ooh. so I'm going to just show you a bit on the face. So with Tori here, can we swap the angle just to her face? Is that okay? Yeah. Perfect. With Tori here then, so we've got skin rejuvenation that we can do on the face and we've got pigmentation and we've got some fine little thread veins on her cheek as well. So Tori is a perfect prime candidate for skin rejuvenation. Um, we've got some little Campbell de Morgan spots, which are like broken little blood spots, um, which the laser will target as well. So we, I'll show you that one up close when I go through to do that as well. Um, what we're looking for with that is it for to, to change colour basically and to coagulate to go sort of a grey or a darker colour. Um, and then with pigmentation on the face, generally it takes a couple of minutes for it to react, but it generally goes a little bit darker um, after treatment. And that's how we know that we've retained like an end point um, of the treatment, so it's been successful. We're not always looking for redness and pain we're looking for a clinical end point so that there's been a reaction on the skin um, but yeah sometimes the client can feel quite a lot of hot sensations pinging sometimes they don't feel anything it depends on the client in front of you so i've already got my ppe on i've got my mask ready to go um, but also i wanted you to hear me as well because can't, you can't hear me as well through the mask i've popped a towel on my client which i'm then going to put something white over the top um, because Colour is a chromophore target for lasers, um, so we could then put something white over the top so it doesn't absorb any extra energy. I'm also going to do a headband to protect my client's hair. Okay, if you can lift up your head for me, Tori. Thank you. I'm going to muzzle you. <laughs> and up. Is that comfy? Yes. Fabulous. Okay, so. What we use at Fairroom for the white side of things, we just use like scrummies, um, just to use as our sort of like white base really. Um, and we use these as our cooling cloths as well. So we put these into cold water um, to cool down any areas after treatment as well. So what I actually have is I have got a bowl of cold water on my second tier of my trolley, not near my laser, with cloths in cold water um, as well. So the first thing I'm gonna start with is a cleanse just to make sure that there's no makeup, no dirt, anything on the skin that could potentially react with the laser light. I've already done a consultation with Tori. Tori's had lots of treatments before anyway, um, but we would be, uh, that's the sort of questions we'd be asking our client whether they've had treatment before, anything that's going to inhibit them having the treatment. So, for example, tan, um, perfumes, makeup, and things like that, things that you need to consider while you're doing a treatment with laser light because laser will zap anything and everything that's in its path and I'm like a really really mean therapist and I cleanse from cold water <laughs> because what we don't want to do we don't want to heat up the skin too much because if we heat up the skin and then we apply more heat you're going to get a heat on heat reaction um, and that can 
also then result in some sort of burning sort of forming on the skin so I do actually cleanse with cold water so I'm not double heating the skin because the laser is going to heat up the skin as well so do warn um, students that that is something that you're going to take forward and changing with what they're used to in facials or lovely warm water it changes to cold water with laser well for me anyway It's not too cold, is it? It's no, just it's like, fine. it's just not warm. <laughs> okay, so because Tori's got um, tattooing on her eyebrows, the other thing I need to consider is my distance from those eyebrows. So I always work with a one centimeter rule. So I work from one centimeter away from any um, tattoos, pigmentation, or anything like that. And you can use a white pencil, or you can do it by eye. I teach all my students to use a white pencil um, until they are more confident in their skills um, and sort of with what they're doing. Um, and then you, what you do is you just draw, I'm not gonna draw all over your face, Tori, I'm not gonna be mean. Draw a line, like boxing around the areas that you're not gonna be treating. Okay, and as soon as I'm ready, I'm gonna then set up my system ready. So. So I know a couple of you have got a Linton, so you'll be familiar with the Lumina. Um, set it up ready for what I want to treat. So I'm going to change my hand piece over to skin rejuvenation. Is there any questions coming through yet? Any questions about anything I'm going through? Fabulous. I can talk and treat, it's not an issue. <laughs> Multitasking at its best. So, 585. So, with Linton as well, they give you all of your protocol sheets for what you're working with. What camera angle am I on? This one. That one. <laughs> That one. that one, I can do any. So they give you protocol sheets to tell you your setting ranges and things like that for students. I encourage all of my students in assessments to actually still refer to these because it shows good practice that they're checking and double checking their settings um, to make sure that they're not going to be putting their clients at risk. So I know that in industry we're always taught to do things without cue cards and things like that when we're assessing at college. But I think, I personally think when it comes to aesthetics, it shows good practice to be double checking manufacturer guidelines and settings. So I don't fail them on things like that. Um, I think it shows good, um, good things to do. So I'm going to be looking for my tone and texture. Um, so it literally has the title across the top of which one I'm going to treat. And then I choose my settings accordingly to that. So, you all good there, Tori? Yeah. Good. You're skin type three, aren't you? 18, three, and 25. I'm gonna tie it in with the vascular because I wanna get a bit of both, so. Let me do 20, two. Skin rejuvenation, 585. Three, three, twenty-two, and twenty. Perfect. Right. So what I've done is I've quite cross-referenced two of my protocol sheets to get the best treatment for Tori because I want to treat the red veins and the pigmentation and a whole of skin rejuvenation. So I've actually mixed two of my protocol sheets together so that the settings kind of overlap. So to check they're still completely safe within the settings, but. I've chosen settings that are safest um, for Tori to then be able to also then treat both. So you're going to need your green goggles on if that's all right, Sophie. Um, and with Tori, we're going to be putting on blackout goggles. And what I also do is I put damp cotton wool underneath them just to make them a bit more comfortable. And the reason I make them damp is because obviously cotton is a fire hazard and I teach that to my students as well. I'm just going to fold that and pop that on top of your eyes. Okay, is that comfy? Okay, so if you want to... 
place those on your eyes and hold them there, and then I'll tie up at the back for you. Is that too tight or is that okay? Yeah, not letting any light in. No. Fabulous. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to treat this little Campbell de Morgan spot here, and then I'm just going to treat a section on the cheek just to show you sort of the reaction that we look for on the skin um, and things like that. So I've already cleansed, the skin's now dry. The other thing I'm going to put on now is some ultrasound gel. Um, when I apply the gel, I only apply it to an area at a time because you don't want the gel to warm up, again, because you don't want to be heating the skin. So I'm going to just treat this section here. I'm quite generous with my gel. It's like ice and a cake. There we go. Okay, so you've got your goggles on, Sophie. Yeah. Fabulous. Okay, so I'm going to go in with my 585 from Linton. Remove the dust cap. I'm going to use a small end piece because with IPL, the smaller the end piece, it MP changes, it doesn't change the fluency, it just changes the size, so it creates less pain on your um, client. So if you don't want to compromise the intensity and fluency that you're delivering, but your clients find it painful, try changing the spot size first before adjusting fluency and things like that. Okay, so I'm going to enable my machine. Okay, so I'm going to do one shot first, Tori, okay. and then see how you feel. Okay, you ready? Yeah. Three, two, one. How was that? It's fine. Hot, but yeah. kind of tolerable. Okay, yeah. and then with IPL, we don't overlap, so we make sure that we leave the bit that we've done and then we go next to it. Okay, you ready? Three, two, one. Okay, you ready if I just carry on? Yeah. Okay? So I leave a little bit of a delay in between my pulses. I don't hold it down too much on the face, purely because it's quite hot and it can be quite uncomfortable otherwise. And you keep the IPL crystal perpendicular so we don't leave it at an angle on the skin. How's that, okay? Yes. Yeah, Perfect. So that's that bit all done. That's the cheek for skin rejuvenation. And then I'll just show you a little bit of the vascular Campbell de Morgan. So there's, a, I don't know, if, can you see that there? I'm, I'm just going to treat this little blood spot there. I don't know if you can see it on the TV very well, but I'm hoping you can. So it's red at the moment, and what we're looking for is I can shoot it sort of two to three times if I don't get the reaction I'm after, but I'm going to change the pressure of my end piece to really, really superficial. Okay, I'm going to zap it. Are you ready? Three, two, one. It's gone a little bit darker, so I'm going to go one more shot, okay? Three, two, one. Perfect. So, what I can see there now is if I scrape off that gel, if you can see, is it has changed colour and sort of the way it looks is different, so I know that there's been enough sort of energy delivered there. Okay, and then what I'm going to do with what I've treated, I'm going to scrape off any excess gel and then apply a cold compress. So what I would generally do in a treatment, I would do sections of the face. So I would do the forehead first, for example, apply a cooling cloth, then move on to another section, like apply my gel, treat that area, apply a cooling cloth, and work around the face logistically. So I'm always cooling while I'm working. Um, I would never leave a bit sort of not cooling, if that makes sense. Is that okay? Yeah, fine, thanks, Kevin. So just taking out any initial heat. I mean, the longer the treatment, they're going to have obviously more heat retaining in their skin. You've only gone a little bit pink, you're not too bad. I mean, we are working only on sort of a middle range setting. We've not gone too high. And then generally, we normally leave them sort of, while you're working them cooling, and by the time you get round that clock of their face, you then can remove that cooling. Um, and then what I go in with is some light seeds. And then always on the face, I end with sunblock every single time without fail.
Okay, so that's a pretty much skin rejuvenation in a very, very quick nutshell of thread frame, Camel de Morgan. Um, pigmentation would have been got with that, um, like sun damage basically, and some broken thread veins. If I was treating pigmentation, it's exactly the same principle of placing the end piece on. The only thing I'd be doing is my ch settings would change and I would be specifically on a pigmented lesion, so like, like a solar lentigo, for example. Is there anything else you want to see from that side of things or are you quite happy with that? I can't actually see anything now. They did see the, the spot. They did? Yes. Perfect. Did. Amazing. Do they see the colour change? Uh, yes. Amazing. Can you? Amazing. Perfect. So, do you want me to move on to anything else, like hair removal, or do you want to see anything else in terms of skin rejuvenation at the moment? Just before I take the goggles off, basically. You're so white. <laughs> yeah. You're happy with that? Perfect, fabulous. So I will move on to some hair removal on Tori's leg then, just to show you um, the difference between the YAG and the IPL. So with hair removal, you've got two options. You've got a YAG attachment, which is a, a proper laser, or you've got the IPL. And the YAG is more suitable if you've got colored skin, um, like ethnic, ethnic skin, dark skin, or a suntan um, as well. Um, so it's quite good for that. So we're gonna stay with the green goggles at the moment, Sophie, if that's okay. I'm going to give you a pair of green goggles. Oh, oh no, these are the green goggles. You've got them out already. Okay. Sorry, I'm giving That's you different ones. Perfect. So, we are going to focus down on the leg now, Sophie, if that's okay. Perfect. So, I've already got Tori's lovely leg out um, for me to zap. So, I'm going to try and go sort of around here so you can see. So, let's change my handpiece over then. So, with the Lumina, I need to come out to change my handpiece. Um, and then I will go back in. Is your hair black or dark brown? Dark brown, yeah. Okay, so again, I'm gonna do the same. I'm gonna wipe over the area, make sure that it's clean. Um, what I actually do with body areas, rather than using laser cleanser, is I just use unfragranced um, wipes. Just to make sure, again, there's just no, nothing on the skin that that's gonna kind of act as a law for the laser light. Okay, and then I'm just gonna dry that off a little bit. Again, so a nice icing layer of gel.
emergence have been working on their viral units. Create an image based on a theme of an inherent acceptor. Which will give her all the skills learned throughout the year and now be showcased here tonight. Learners have been required to create a full look of the model, including hair, makeup and costume, to represent the theme of shows. Each learner has chosen the character from their favourite theme the show, which they have researched, planned and then created their final look, utilising professional creative hair, makeup and costume techniques. We have a range of characters, including Philip Carlyle from The Great Showman, Dorothy from The Wizard of Oz, Earl from Beauty and the Beast, Sandy from Greece, Scar from The Lion King, Grizzabella from Cats, The Mad Hatter from Wallace in Alice in Wonderland, Gabriella from Sharpay from Wise and Mutual, but to name a few. We'll also be treated to work on some of our highly talented production artists who will be showcasing their body art skills. I'll let the camera begin.
I'm Beatrice and I study Level 3 Media. Hi, my name is Tashani Maharatna and I study Level 2 Creative Media. I'm Joey Thomas and I study Performing Arts at Farron College. Um, my name is Lola Hart and I study Performing Arts. My name's India and I study Fashion and Clothing. I am Tasmin and I study Fashion. I'm Maxime's and I study Level 3 Music. I am Ingrid and I study Level 3 Music. My name is Mia Froy and I study Level 2 Hairdressing. Um, I'm Piper Massey and I'm currently studying Level 2 Hairdressing. I picked Fern because it was doing the courses that I wanted to do and it was quite local as well. Um, because it's local? Because it was close by and the facilities were amazing and it, I just felt like I would fit in. Uh, because the music course was like the best out of all the colleges we went to in the south, to be honest. I thought the course looked amazing and it just seemed intriguing to see how I could further my fashion design skills. It was close to me and um, the course looked useful. I chose Fairham College because my sibling went here when they were younger and I've only heard positive feedback about this college so I thought it would be perfect for me. Uh, I picked Fairham College because not only was it uh, easily accessible to me but on the open and taster days that I went to I I loved kind of the, what the course was. I got a really really detailed explanation of exactly what I was doing and when and how I was going to be graded and it it just it seemed to really suit me and the lecturers were lovely and it just really appealed to me. Because um, seeing as it's a uh, Ofsted rating and the quality of the service, the quality of the service they give and the facilities, it's um, it's outstanding. Because I like the facilities that they provided and I like the feel of the college. I think it really like pushes um, me out of my comfort zone a lot as you're always experimenting with something, trying something different, meeting new people. It's actually really well, cause like, you get to like design, um, you get to design a lot of stuff and it's also, and the best thing about it is like, when it comes to the final project, it's like displayed and then everyone else, um, everyone else, I mean like family and friends can come in and see your work. I think it's very enjoyable being a student here because everybody is very friendly and also if you ever have a concern the teachers are always there for you. It's good, you can rely on other departments for resources and help as well so that's fun. I love it, it really does, you're able to emphasise your creativity and just showcase it really. I love it. It's sick. It is real sick. I get to have so much fun and learn so much. It's sick. And we do a whole bunch of like showcases and stuff and it's so cool. It's amazing. I love it. I love being able to develop a skill and like in a, in a great environment for it. Um, it's really challenging at times but it's also really rewarding. I like it. I like the challenge of getting to pick your own creative stuff to do. Home? No. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'm looking at universities, but I might stay on and do the um, HNC levels here. Um, I would like to do an apprenticeship. Um, after college, I'm planning on becoming a makeup artist. Either an apprenticeship or uni. I've not decided yet, but I think I will figure that out just next year. I'm looking now probably to take a gap year, hopefully to get some work professional work myself, just out and about to try and get as much done in that year. Then if I want to go and study to uni, I can, but if the gap year works out well and I start landing jobs just by myself, then I will continue that. After college, I'd really like to go to university to further my studies and hopefully become an actor sometime in the future. Hopefully somewhere in the fashion industry. Hopefully uni, doing something very similar to this course. I don't know. I um, haven't really looked at unis, to be honest. Oh, Ingrid and the Schmucks, it's an amazing band and they're playing, bringing back some bangers. Bringing back some bangers with Ingrid and the Schmucks, my band, <laughs> and just having fun. Um, being able to present my skills and what I've learned throughout the year. Quite excited to do the, to do the runway walk, just show off what I've done. 
Oh, um, I'm excited to watch everyone else's like short films, see everyone else's work because we've all put so much effort into this um, and it's more or less a celebration of the department. I'm really looking forward to like seeing the audiences like see my work. Uh, well, probably performing the song we're performing. I think it's a song from Les Mis. I've not actually done an audition for it yet or I've not actually done it right, so I've just been told that I've been put in it. So I'm looking like to perform that, would be cool. I'm mainly looking forward to, in our creative showcase, to our final performance as we are performing a song One Day More from Les Mis and I'm really looking forward to that. Seeing everyone else's work. Just looking at everyone's work, it'll give me a good chance to show my work. And just looking at other industries, like what, they, what their work looks like, really. Getting to be put in a band with some amazing people. Getting to meet new people, um, again, in an environment that's just perfect for what I want to do, and being able to use all the equipment and the technology that's available to me to the best of my ability. Doing my first client and just seeing a smile on their faces. Um, I'm just, just working with all the clients. Probably just being able to expand my knowledge with like um, equipment. Um, my highlight of the year was like when we helped out the performing arts, uh, when we actually helped out the performing arts people with like their show and of course making props. And the exciting, the other exciting thing is like I even dressed up as like one of the characters they're performing of and then I actually welcomed the audience in and also gave them flyers and I even got to like wear makeup and everything. I'd probably say the Treasure Island show we did, I really like that, is a fun comedy piece. My highlight of the year has most definitely been doing the Adams Family because it was with a very talented cast and overall it was a very enjoyable experience. Making friends with lovely people. Definitely working on organisation, furthering my creativity and time management. So we played a gig at the Heartbreakers in Southampton um, and we had played like six 80s songs and we all dressed up, it was so cool. Um, it was a gig at the Heartbreakers in Southampton. Um, we all played six songs in sets. Um, there was multiple bands from, of students from the course, and we all just had a great time. It was so much fun. Doing um, Belle from Beauty and the Beast. I'm going to be doing The Queen of Hearts from Alice in Wonderland. My FMP was a short film tackling the hard subject of sexual assault and the healing afterwards. My FMP was based on the theme Dreams. We had to actually do, we had to make our product um, based, on our, based on the theme dreams. So I did mine about ambish, ambish, ambition and what I want to do in life. So I actually narrated my dreams through photos. Our FMP was a performance we directed and made ourselves and it was about a young man named Ned who entered the dreamscape with his imagination just simply looking for his muse so he could finish writing his song. I made a, a series of two pillows, one's a, one's a heart and one's a, a lotus flower. So I've done the regeneration of Brixton and how it's changed as a city and I did that through embroidery and pattern cutting. The intoxicating smell of the graveyard. Once a year, we gather people on the family tree to honor the great cycle of life and death. Come, every member of our clan, living, dead, and undecided, 
and let us celebrate by this to be an Adams. Come to me, my precious one. She is keen so pale, her eyes so black, her dress so down to the And tell us what's every Adams goes for. Darkness, grief, and unspeakable sorrow. When you're an Adams, you need to have a little moonlight. You got to see the morning shades so gay. You got to put some poison in your veins. That's the way when you're a man.
so true. Every night is a honeymoon. Did me die. Slow dancing the way they true. We still got it. February 15th. Say you will, heart attack, give me chills Cadillac in the hills, diamond black, drink your fill Oh, 
Look, I was going to propose all together, but I'll just tell you to... I've got a few more tickets for Vivian for uh, Wednesday and things like that. What? Are you feeling yourself? I certainly am. lose my keys. So I figured I'd pop around and see if you had one because I did a little bit of practicing. You know, I'm doing it with my friends when I ask them. Okay. 
Yeah. 